Did you all enjoy the variant update? Shiny after shiny after shiny. Look at that shiny. Ooh, shiny. How about that shiny? Wow! How about the... That one isn't so good. But this one is really cool. Sorry the video is late this week. I've been shiny hunting, I have. But also more seriously, mourning the loss of our great one cost wonders. Little Paris. Little Hoot Hoot. Little Canopy. And the rest. But I am not going to quit that easily. It's time to crown a new one cost king or queen. So, without further ado, how good is Do Gong in Poker Road? Okay, so apparently Dugong is used as the benchmark for what is and is not a one-cost Pokemon in Poker Oak, according to someone in the Discord. I have no way of verifying this. So let's take a look at it and see why that is. Dugong, what does it do? Base stats? Offensively? Terrible. Defensively? Eh. Abilities. Okay, Thick Fat is a good ability on Pokemon that are worried about ice and fire attacks, but on Dugong, I guess it's not the worst. So we've got a chunky, fairly defensive Pokemon with a decent defensive ability. Let's hope it gets some useful utility options so it can take advantage of- Nope. Okay, its base stats are bad for attacking, but maybe it gets some really high base power stab at- Nope. Does it at least get Scald? Nope. So it does nothing. Well, at least via eggs, Dugong gets some useful moves. Bouncy Bubble and Freeze Dry. You may remember this combo from our good friend Lumineon. The combination of a water move and freeze dry to hit water types while covering the other resistances of the water type means you hit nearly everything in the game for neutral damage. Quick side note, Lumineon lost Drizzle in the latest update, which is very sad, but it gained Water Bubble as an ability, which doubles the power of water moves. And as you're about to see later, it's, <laughs> it's pretty good. I think Lumineon might actually be even better now, and it's also been brought down from a 3 cost to a 1 cost, and still keeps all of its broken egg moves. In fact, if you want to know what the new best 1 cost Pokemon in the game is, it's probably Lumineon. But we're not here to talk about Lumineon, we're here to talk about this bag of blubber, Dugong. Dugong also gets Slack Off and Steam Eruption, which is good. It needs better stabs, and Steam Eruption takes care of that. It's basically a better Scold. Slack Off is a decent option too, as a lot of the time, without Passive Unlocked, you're not going to be doing enough damage with Bouncy Bubble to recover. So how good is Dugong? We're about to find out. Meet Hercules. 20 kilograms of pure, unadulterated muscle surrounded by an additional 100 kilos of rippling blubber. With an impressive 10 levels on this Parasect, he's about to put his stab ice moves to good use and one hit KO this... um, never mind. Well, Parasect is a strong Pokemon, as we all know from previous videos. Two hits is respectable. This Diggersby, on the other hand, a super effective stab water bubble will take care of- Nope. Okay, so perhaps Hercules is going to need some help here. But no matter, that's what friends are for after all. See, I had a plan. A plan to help Dugong get by with a little help from his friends. Basically, Dugong doesn't get any way to boost its stats. So, I brought in Tiny Dancer and Femboy Freddy to do the boosting for me. They would use Calm Mind and Quiver Dance and then pass the boost over to Hercules, who would then sweep with Bouncy Bubble and Freeze Dry. And for a short time, it seemed to be working. Hercules tore through Team Flare with no trouble at all. Tiny Dancer graciously passing the Quiver Dancers, despite knowing full well he could have swept himself. If you're looking for a really fun Pokemon that costs a little bit more than Dugong, but not much more, I gotta recommend you Oricorio. If you get Quiver Dance and Oblivion Wing egg moves on it, it's so good. It basically is a better Noctowl and you can run the electric flying mini Zapdos typing on it, which makes it really useful defensively as well as offensively. It also gets Roost by a level up, so it can even be good without Oblivion Wing. You can run Air Slash, Revelation Dance, Roost, which it gets all via level up. So all you really need unlocked is Quiver Dance. And with adaptability as a passive, it decimates everything in its path. It's so good. But we're not here to talk about Oricorio. We're here to talk about old blubbery bubble boy Hercules here, so back to the video. And for a short time, it seemed to be working. But as the waves continued on, and the quality of opponents began to rise, our attacks became less and less effective. 
Freddy and Tiny Dancer were struggling to find opportunities to pass on their boosts. And at wave 195, it all came crashing down. One untimely critical hit, and our chain of Calm Minds and Quiver Dancers was broken. With no way to pass boost to young Hercules, he couldn't tank the super effective grass moves of Venusaur, and took an early trip to the River Styx. A somewhat fortunate sacrificial switch from our rival's Hydreigon left Tiny Dancer too weak to tank the Metagross, and suddenly, things were looking grim, as I realised that I hadn't put any real thought or effort into the other three Pokemon on my team. <laughs> President Taft was caught with his pants down, and before I knew it, it was all over. So, from this failed attempt, I had learned that Dugong is, to put it bluntly, a terrible Pokemon. It lacks the punch required to be a dedicated sweeper in Poke Rogue. But from this failure, something exciting happened. I had enough candies to unlock Dugong's passive, Water Bubble. Water Bubble halves the power of fire attacks, which isn't terribly exciting on Dugong, but more interestingly, Water Bubble doubles the power of water moves. I rebooted a classic run. Tiny Dancer and Freddy would come along for the ride once again, but this time I was hoping that this newfound offensive power would give Dugong the punch it would sorely need to go the distance. And punch it did. See, it turns out that doubling the power of a stab move is pretty powerful. Suddenly, Hercules was sweeping entirely on its own. No boosts needed. No teammates carrying water for this water type. Hercules tore through the rival fights. He tore through evil bosses. He even swept the Elite Four without even switching. He had finally become the hero I always knew he could be. And it was impressive right up until the final, always difficult Wave 195 where Dugong struggled at first to withstand the super effective fighting attacks of Samurott. Not able to attack and heal simultaneously at a fast enough rate, due to Samurott resisting our boosted bouncy bubbles, I had to revert back to my batting pass strategy, now perfected, as I had added Rory B Bellows to the passing chain, giving us the much needed physical defensive boost that we would need to tank Samurott's superpowers, and King Gambit's bit of blades. Tiny Dancer Quiver danced us to plus six special attack, speed and special defense, and Hercules came back in to seal the deal. If you're wondering how we dealt with Eternatus, well, to tell you the truth, I messed it up a little bit and I let Mr. Mime die before it could pass the barriers. But I did get six Quiver Dancers past to Hercules in the end and it was basically over from there. So let's assess what we've learned and add Dugong to our tier lists. Without egg moves and passives, Dugong is a truly awful Pokemon. It has no offensive capability, middling defences and poor defensive typing, and it lacks any utility whatsoever. It sits firmly at the very bottom of D tier. With egg moves and passives, and it really does need the passive to have any usefulness whatsoever, even with these, Dugong is still not a great Pokemon. While it can hit hard off the bat with water bubble boosted bouncy bubbles, try saying that fast, and heal itself at the same time, it still lacks a way to boost itself and this power boost eventually starts to feel like it drops off towards the end of classic mode, especially when Pokemon start to appear with multiple health bars. I think it still sits in D tier, unfortunately. With passive and egg moves unlocked, nearly every Pokemon can be viable in Poker Rogue, and I don't think having a single powerful stab move in Bouncy Bubble or Steam Eruption is enough to realistically move Dugong out of the bottom tier. It needs to be doing more than that. We may have to quickly reassess this side of the tier list too, so Luminion is now a one cost Pokemon, and I think for this reason, and the fact that I underestimated just how good Water Bubble can be, it's basically the same boost that it would get from Drizzle anyway. So with that in mind, I'm going to move it up to B tier. Also I'm moving Oinkalone down to B tier, because it's ugly and Filet Away can be hard to pull off. But mainly because it's ugly, that's, that's the main reason. So that's Dugong. Do let me know what you think. For one cost, it's okay. If you have its passive unlocked and your team needs some resistances that water types can offer, it might be worth throwing it on with that remaining one point you usually find yourself with when team building in Classic. Once again, sorry the videos are a bit late. I was at a wedding and then I spent most of the week shiny hunting and these videos do take a while to put together. I should be back on a usual schedule going forward anyway. So thanks for watching. See ya!